Hi, it's Matt from Table Flip Games, and in this video we're going to look at Maya's pivots and just have a look at how you use them inside of uh, the program. So let's get started. So if I want to make the uh, gizmo bigger, I can do by pressing the plus and minus uh, keys to make it bigger or smaller. Um, if I want to move this, I can just move it in the individual axes. Or if I press, hold the middle, left click, I can move it in all the axes, but you can see here that it's translating into world space. So if I want to reset it, I can do it by just holding uh, zeroing out these numbers. Now that will put it back to into the center because it's around a pivot. So inside of 3D, we work off pivots. Now you can change these pivots depending on where you want to put them, and I'll show you that in a minute. But I just want to show you the rest of this channel box here. So how Maya works is that it works off history. And the history will appear here, and it will be a long list. Now, you'll want to delete this history ever so often, because if you start to build it up, um, it will start to make Maya go slower. But also as well, when you export it into a game engine, your object, you don't want to have that history. Um, down here as well, you have something called layers. So say if you wanted to put this on a layer, uh, if you're used to Photoshop, it's a little bit like that. So I select the object. So just click on the object, click layers, create a layer from selected. And if I double click on this, it will bring another option up, and I can say uh, demo. I can change the wireframe, click save. And now I can hide it, the object. Another way of doing this without using a layer is if you select the object like this and press H, that will also hide it, and if you press H again, and that's why this outliner is so important, because you will be able to find hidden objects inside of it. Now another thing is if you press Control A, you'll be able to select the attribute editor. And if you press Control A again, it will bring up the channel editor, the channel box layer editor. So Control A is a hotkey for that. Now if you notice that it's got information for bear with it, uh, materials and loads of other things as well. Now, what I want to do is I want to rename this because you can imagine if you had PQ1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, to 1,000 here and you hadn't got them named, it would be very hard. Now, there's two ways of doing this. We can change it here. Okay, or I can double-click there and change it. So there's a couple of ways of doing these things. But that means now that I've got my, my 3D object named um, and this is where I can find a lot of different information about uh, pivots and all sorts of things. So the next thing I wanted to show you was how to change the pivot of this box because at the moment when I rotate round it's rotating round the center pivot. Now if this was a wall you wouldn't want to change, you would want the pivot to be in the bottom corners the reason for this is so that you can snap them together. Um, but before I show you how to do the pivot, change the pivot, I want to show you how to select um, the object. So by default, if you select it, this is called object selection mode. And there's a couple more different selections that we can do. So 3D objects are built up of vertis vertices, faces, and sides, so edges. Um, now this has got, and you'll notice here that I've got all that information here about that box. Um, if this isn't, isn't turned on, you need to go into Windows. Uh, sorry, Display, Heads Up Display, Poly Count. And that will turn this on. And you'll notice that you've got verts, edges, polygons, tries, and UVs. Now this is how big it is, okay? So this is the size. So when you hear about poly counts, this is the number you look at. 
we have verts, so there's eight verts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Edges, we have 12, around here. And faces, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now I'm just gonna turn this button on here, which is wireframe, so when I untick it or unselect it. So if you select if you left click anywhere in the scene, it will unselect what you've been working on. So if I hold the right ma right mouse button, I can select edge. And if I hold shift, I can select multiple edges. Or if I left click drag, I can do marquee tool selection. If I hold control, I can deselect. Or if I left click hold control, I can deselect. So if I right click and go vertex, I can select on vertices. And I can move these vertices individually to start to create shapes. You notice I'm not doing this because, yeah. So I try to work in the space. I also have face selection and I could make this bigger, and if I hold X, I can snap to grid. You'll notice as well, I think if I, okay. So that's how you select. And like I said, everything has a, f um, what makes up a 3D mesh is edges, vertices, faces and um, yeah UVs so and this can all be found here how many how many tries this is this is the poly count uh, how many edges how many verts how many faces so this is a polygon it's a face it's made up of four vertices which equals one face and you don't want to go over four vertices. So, for example, any anything over a four-sided shape is called an engon, which is kind of bad, generally because it's very hard to triangulate. So when this goes into the engine, it triangulates from point to point. So for this one, it would actually triangulate like this. So if I just run a clean up, it says, you can see that it's now triangulated the box, and this is how it would go into. Uh, this is how it would be in the engine. It works in triangles. So if you model and you've got triangles and squares, that's fine. But anything more than four sides is bad. So you need to be careful of that. And just press Control Z to undo. Um, and yeah, so that's that's it for kind of moving around, uh, right click, and that sort of thing. So the next thing I want to show is just the pivot and then we'll move on to primitives. So if I press D on the keyboard, I can then move this pivot anywhere I want. Now if this was a wall, I would move it to the corners here. And that's because I want the wall to snap to each other. Now I could try and line it up like this and thingy, but you can see it's very hard. So if I hold V and left and drag, I can snap to vert. If I hold X, I can snap to grid. So you can see that's very useful. And once you finish, just press D and that will reset the pivot. Now, one thing I do want to show you is just this tool setting. If if this is if this is going the wrong way or it's um, or it's uh, screwed up or you just can't get it to work, uh, you can reset the pivot by double clicking on this tool here to bring up the tool setting and just reset the tool and it will reset it for you. Okay? Because what we can do is if you're working on an angle, you could, if I hold D, grab that edge.
Yeah. So I can change the pivot that way. And it's quite cool, that is. Um, but if I want to just reset it, I just click reset. and thingy. So I do that again. So I hit D. I rotate it to the angle I want. Hit D again. And then the direction I move that in now is fine. So I'll just control Z that and just reset the tool. I'll just click reset like this. I can change as well if it's based off object, world, component, parent, normal. Lots of different options here. I tend to keep it between world and object. Um, and that's thingy. Um, I've got three main tools I use, which is move, rotate, and scale. Scale, it scales wherever it, the pivot is. So if the pivot was in the center, it would scale from the center. Um, rotate as well, rotates from the pivot. And move, we've already covered. So, like I said, with the rotate, you can rotate it in all different axes. And the same with scale, if I just wanted to scale it like this, I can do. Okay. Now, I did have some buttons up here, and these are tools that I use the most. So, to create a button, you just find what you want to create. So, I want to create delete history. I'm going to hold control, shift, and left click. And then I'm going to come to modify and do the same for freeze transformation and center pivot. Now these are really important. History deletes the history here. Freeze the transformation freezes all of these transformations out. So you start fresh. And center pivot will put the pivot back into the center. And then I could hold X to snap that. So it's like that. But my, I want my pivot there anyway. And if I delete the history, you'll notice that all that history is gone now. Uh, so if your mesh is going really slow, that's what you need to do. Okay. Well, say I wanted to rotate this on the center axis. I can do by doing this. And if I hold J, I can snap rotate. you notice it here. So I can actually put that on completely and say snap at 45. And it will always snap at 45 degree angles. I tend to keep it at 15 and I keep it off and just hold J. And that should, there you go, should let you snap rotate at 15 degree intervals. But you can change it in the tool settings here. Like I said, I just double clicked on here and put it here for me. And then if I delete the freeze the transformations, you can see they're all frozen out again. Um, and like I said, if anything goes wrong with this tool, just hit the reset tool. In the next video, we're going to look at uh, Maya primitives and what we can create from that. So I'll see you in the next video. If you like this video and want to see more, we have a range of videos on our YouTube channel covering topics from programming to art, and eventually we will have animation tutorials on this site. If you'd like to support us, you can subscribe and like. And if you want to have early access to these videos, have a say on what topics are covered, and also have access to the source code and art assets from this series and other series, please visit our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week with a new video.